I want to get back to uh, one of the big themes on Wall Street this week, and that is crypto optimism over the odds for future Bitcoin ETFs pushing that token above $42,000 for the first time in a year and a half now. Things have pulled back just a little bit, a smidge there, $41,906 right now. Um, but we are still looking at a roughly 20% gain. That's just in the last month alone. Crypto investor Anthony Pompliano is here as the founder of Pomp Investments, and you are now a New York resident again. I am. That's wow. of so, August. So no, I thought Miami was supposed to be where it's at. It is. Ken Griffin, a bunch of other people moving, Jeff Bezos. Uh, I think that what you're going to find is uh, people want to live both uh, in a density of individuals, like in New York City, and then people also want to live uh, where they think capital is going to move. And so that's a place like Miami. Uh, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll get back to that. But let's let's talk crypto right now. Let's talk Bitcoin specifically. $42,000. What do you ascribe the move to? Yeah, uh, Bitcoin is a free market asset. And I think one of the things people forget in finance is that markets are forward looking. And so what we're seeing here is people are allocating to an asset that they believe is going to go up in the future, obviously. Uh, things that will drive that are the Bitcoin ETF. But as people are allocating to this, 70% of the circulating supply of Bitcoin has not moved in a year. The reason why that's important is this is an $800 billion asset that has gone up 150% over the last 12 months. So when an asset goes up 150%, you would expect people to sell into the strength, kind of take profits. That's not happening. And so Bitcoiners are not selling that Bitcoin. They're not going to sell it to Wall Street. And so Wall Street's going to have to continue to bid up the price. And you that share it. issue. So the 70%, that has not changed, not just this past year. But by the way, that has not changed, I don't think, for many, many years. It's always been very high. 70% is the all-time high, so it's been creeping right. up, which has this reflexive kind of feedback loop, right? So if more people won't sell and price right. goes up, then price continues to go up even more rapidly. Okay, the other 30% that is moving. Yes. Do you think that that, I mean, I don't know if you can look through some of the numbers. Is that, are those new buyers? Are those the old buyers who owned the original 70% saying, I want more? What is that? So it's interesting when you look at the data, it's a little bit of everything, right? There's definitely more accumulation happening. So people who already had Bitcoin are continuing to buy more Bitcoin. Uh, an interesting statistic is if you dollar cost average every single day with $10 from January 1st until now, you're up 100%. So with all the boom, the bust, everything in between, uh, a Bitcoin analyst, Dylan LeClaire, pointed out, you're up 100%. So just dollar cost averaging alone will give you a great return. Now, there's also this net new wave of capital coming in. So you have the institutions, but also you have a bunch of people sitting on the sidelines saying, well, if BlackRock wants Bitcoin, maybe I should buy some as well. And so that net new capital is definitely starting to come in, but I don't right. think we're actually going to see it until but the, the real, gun goes no, off okay, But ETFs. the real move, I think, seemed to happen as a function of this idea that the Federal Reserve, the new wisdom, whether it's conventional or otherwise, uh, or right even, is that they're going to ultimately have to turn things around and lower interest rates sometime in 2024. Is that what you ascribe? I mean, there was the ETF piece, and everyone said, oh, over here, it's the ETF piece. And yes. everyone says, oh, no, it's actually this. Markets are forward-looking, and if you go back to 2021, Bitcoin started to fall as soon as the Fed started talking about, we are going to cut rates. And so people were like, oh, wait a second, inflation is high in the summer of 2022. Why is Bitcoin falling? It's supposed to be this inflation hedge asset. But it was because Bitcoin and the holders right. saw what was going to happen. Same thing's happening right now. Bill Ackman's right. betting that interest rates are going to get cut in Q1. The market's pricing right. in 100% uh, you know, likelihood of an interest rate cut in Q2. Bitcoiners right now and people who want Bitcoin say it's going to happen even earlier. What is the share right now um, internationally of ownership of Bitcoin? Meaning, is it predominantly in the United States? Is it predominantly in China? How, if you were to make a pie chart of the ownership on a, 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 a globe, what would that look like? So uh, let's separate Bitcoin and hash rate. Hash rate, about 35% or so, is in the United States. Uh, when China banned mining, the United States was the big winner there. Right. Uh, ownership's a little bit harder because there's so many wallets that we don't know exactly geographically where they are. Uh, but you can see capital flows. The United States uh, and Asia seem to really be driving a lot of the capital flows right now. Uh, the European region is actually a little bit behind and not allocating nearly as much. And so I think that America is going to be a big winner in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency race. Uh, we see companies being built here, Coinbase being a fantastic example of 330% over the last uh, or yeah, year to date. And what we've watched is regulators have stepped in and they basically are slapping the wrist of anyone who is not operating within the American well, financial system. Michael Saylor, you know, has had, uh, I guess down at 17,000, there were people that thought that he was going to get like a margin call or something. He's back now. I don't know how much he bought something like how much? He's got 174,000 Bitcoin. He's up $2 billion on it. He made and some weird comment the other day, and that was about what percentage of the global financial system, in his view, Bitcoin will represent at some point. And then he did some simple math and came out with some 
crazy number. What, what, what was it? I saw it. The, There's all kinds of numbers that fly but around. It was like five to 10 million per coin or something was, was what he came up with. If Bitcoin just simply matches gold, it'd be $500,000. If it's 500,000, if it matches gold. Just matches gold at uh, 20, um, or I'm sorry, $10 trillion. Now, if you continue to look at uh, you know other assets it could eat into, if you have a dollar today and you want to store wealth, you historically could have bought gold, you could have bought uh, you know, fine art, you could have yeah. bought all kinds, real estate, whatever. Hard, yeah, hard ass. Young people are saying to themselves, I want to buy the hardest asset I can find, which tends to be Bitcoin. And it's liquid, and it is the best performing asset over the last 10 years. But it's not a, but the, 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 the sailor question is how much of it becomes part of the quote unquote financial system. And does it, it, is he suggesting that there has to be a payments element or an actual he, transaction element? But he was saying back. gold. He, you weren't saying a payment. If it became part of the payment system, it could be much bigger. Well, than, but it also, just, if it became part of, and this goes back to, can it really be part of the payment system and have actual and continued increase? Because as we've, we've discussed a million yeah. times, if it keeps Why increasing, so, nobody's ever going to use it. Except, if you, except there's, there's that company we had on that uses just little tiny little pieces here's of Bitcoin. What, here's what I would say. Whenever to, to I do it, someone, and it doesn't matter the, 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 the little minuscule variations on a daily basis. Whenever I talk to someone matter. private and they ask me about Bitcoin, I tell them it's very simple. If you think that the Federal Reserve and other central banks are going to have to print capital uh, or print money in order to finance all of this debt, then you're going to want to be in something other than dollars. And You've got to get Bitcoin Andrew on board. Be you're still not on board. board. You, you, I have uh, been you must be curious Are you more skeptical? The beginning. But at 25,000, you were you, you, you really... I was probably early on my career. Number, there was right. a number you once said that if it hit, that you would think about buying it for no, your no, kids. Like 5,000 bucks. 5,000, right. 5, 000, right. <laughs> but at 25, you were really saying this is way too... Now it's 42. you got to eventually what throw is the, in the towel. What, 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 what number where question? you'll say, I'm, I'm, I believe in it? 100? Well, I just think it's a very... Because it's such a abstract concept that it's like but it's a not, non-existent thing, even though I know it's a thing for some people... It, I think but a lot all of people money are getting yeah. huh. Maybe. I know it's yes. a very philosophical No, no, but situation. Like, aren't there like sick? You, you can describe why gold is worse. I mean, it's not because it's pretty, yeah. and it's not because it's used in jewelry. It's because it's immutable. It's cross-cultural. There's only so much around. And, and there, these are the characteristics of money since the beginning yeah, of time. Everybody has gold in their... Right, their correct. No, but you're going back to the water. As a store of value. This is the, yeah. this it's is like the if you understand the distributed ledger nature yeah. of Bitcoin, you can see that it, it can represent barter for something. It, here's, here's, one of the, here's one of the crazy parts about this is a lot of people who question Bitcoin's uh, efficacy or, or legitimacy, they're using uh, a worldview that is dominant in traditional finance. Things like right. intrinsic value, things it's like efficient back market hypothesis, etc. Yeah, uh, what we're watching though God is... God bless him, Charlie Munger view of the world. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and by the way, you, you've been right for 50 years having that worldview. I think that Bitcoiners are coming into the market and they're saying, wait a second, there's a different view of the world. Something like intrinsic value. If you and I both look at an asset and and I tell you the intrinsic value is X, you say it's Y. Obviously, there's no intrinsic value. It's just what our opinion is, right? Same thing with efficient market hypothesis. I think what Bitcoin's really doing is it's showing there's this new view of the world. So far, it's been right. And if it continues to be right, there will be trillions of dollars that flow into the asset. Anthony Pompliano, a true New Yorker. A true New Yorker. Thank you, guys. Thank you.